In this lesson, we'll take a look at some characteristics of polynomial functions, the first several polynomial functions. And the first example, we have a straight line here. And this is called a first degree or linear function. The leading coefficient is greater than 0. We'll call the leading coefficient a here. And so it moves up as you go from left to right across the screen. The end behavior is it starts in quadrant 3 and it goes toward quadrant 1. Now, this linear function can cross the x-axis in at most one place. So we say there's at most one root. The root actually would be right there. And uh, a straight line can only cross the x-axis once. It can't cross in more than one place. On the bottom right-hand corner of the page is the graph of a second degree or quadratic function, a polynomial function. It's also called a parabola. The leading coefficient is greater than zero here, so it opens up. And it can cross the x-axis in at most two places, has at most two roots. Now, quadratics could actually have one root if we were to draw the quadratic like this, for example. If it came down and, let's say, touched in one spot and then went back up, that would have one root. If the leading coefficient was negative and it looked like this and then went back down, that one never touches the x-axis at all, so it would have no roots whatsoever. Flipping over to the next page, these are both cubic functions, or third degree functions. The leading coefficient is greater than zero here, and if the leading coefficient of a cubic is greater than zero, its end behavior goes from quadrant three to quadrant one. Now, it can have at most three roots. This one actually crosses the x-axis in three places. It's possible for it to cross in less than three places. It does have to cross in at least one. If I were to draw an example of one that crosses in two places, it might look something like this. Let's say it crossed like this, and it came down, and it just touched before it went back up again. So there's only actually one root here and one root here, so it only has two roots. It could, for example, look like this, come back down, but never touch the x-axis again and go up again. And so it would have one root. It does have to have at least one root. There's no way to draw it, so it has no roots whatsoever. The leading coefficient in the uh, bottom example is negative. It's still a cubic. And this one crosses at most three places. And like the examples above, I could make it so that it has actually two roots or even one. So it's the same as the one above. It has at most three roots. Here's an example on this page of two quartic functions. These are fourth degree. Notice that every, as we go from graph to graph, there's an additional turn every time. Every time you make another turn, it adds a number onto the degree. So for example, on the previous page, these were cubic functions. It turned and it turned again. Okay? The number of turns is actually one less than degree. It's third degree, so it turned twice. When we add another term, we get a fourth degree, or quartic. This uh, one here in the top graph has a leading coefficient that's positive. You can see in the example it's 1x to the fourth plus x cubed, etc. And if the leading coefficient is positive for a quartic, it goes from quadrants 2 to 1. It actually looks like the shape of a W. You can stretch it so it doesn't really look too much like a W, but in general they have a W shape. And a quartic function can cross the x-axis in at most four places. One, two, three, four. It would be possible to draw this so that it doesn't cross in four places. For example, I, I, if I wanted to, it to cross in two places, one, two, and if I dip down and just touch before it goes back up, well, this one has two roots, here and here, and then one more here, so it has three in total. I could actually make it have no roots whatsoever if it did this and went back up then that one never crossed the x-axis at all. So that's why it says that it has at most four roots. The uh, example on the bottom of the page is a, a fourth degree or quartic with a negative coefficient. A is less than zero. So we actually can call this a negative quartic. And it kind of has the shape of an M. And it can cross at most four places. It could cross in less than that as well, or none, if we drew it similar to the example above here that I drew. So it has at most four roots. In this example, we're asked to match each of the following equations with the proper graph. 
And we'll use leading coefficient and the degree, the general shape of uh, each of those quartic or cubic or parabola or straight line. And the leading coefficient of this is 1. And it's quartic, x to the power of 4. And so that's why if it's quartic and x to the power of 4, it must go from the second quadrant to the first. And so that's why this would have to be the second graph. It starts in the second quadrant and ends in the first quadrant. So the x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 8 graph is the second one here. For b, this g of x function is a cubic with a leading coefficient that's positive. So this cubic must go as do any normal positive cubics uh, from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. So this would have to be the first graph. And so that's the g of x function. For C here, it's a fifth order polynomial, it's a quintic. The leading coefficient is negative. Now, odd functions normally start in the second sorry, the third quadrant and go to the first, but if there's a negative leading coefficient, they're reflected in the x-axis. And so in this case, this odd uh, quintic function would start in quadrant two and go to quadrant four. If it was a positive quintic, it would start down here, turn a couple times, and go up. And so this would have to be the third graph. So that's the h of x function. This is another quartic, but the difference between it and the uh, this one here is this has a leading coefficient that's negative. It's negative 1. So the uh, positive quartic went from quadrants 2 to 1. So this is reflected upside down compared to that one. So this will actually have to go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. And so this is the fourth graph. So in order to match these, you really have to know what the basic ones look like, what quadrant they start from and go to. And of course, if the leading coefficient is the opposite sign, they're the opposite. In the example on the final page here, asks, we're told that for an nth degree polynomial, and we'll get to example two in a moment, the nth column of finite differences will be constant. So if you have a third degree polynomial, the third column of finite differences will all be the same. That's what constant means. If it was a eighth degree polynomial, then the eighth column of finite differences would all be constant. Now, the number at the end of whatever row is or column is constant is actually the degree factorial. And factorial means all the numbers from that number down to 1 multiplied. So for example, 3 factorial, for example, is defined to be 3 times 2 times 1. That's an example of what 3 factorial means. Now in the example here, we're asked to use finite differences to determine the degree of the polynomial that's represented by this table, and then find the leading coefficient. And what you do is you look at, make sure the x's are in order, 0 to 4, and they are. Look at the difference between the y's. From negative 1 to 5, it goes up by 6. So actually, I did 5, take away negative 1, and I got 6. 15 minus 5 is 10. 29 minus 15 is 14. And 47 minus 29 is 18. So those are the differences. That's how much y is, is changing as you go from point to point. Now, these are not all the same, so we do another row of differences. So from 6 to 10, there's a difference of 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. Notice I'm taking the bottom number and subtracting the top one from it. 14 minus 10 is 4, and 18 minus 14 is also 4. So the second row of differences are the same. So that's why this would be a quadratic or second degree polynomial. Now, in order to find the uh, leading coefficient, that number right there, they're all 4, that 4 should equal the leading coefficient times 2 factorial. This is says up here the nth differences, which is the 4 here, are equal to a times n factorial. So 4 here is equal to the leading coefficient times 2 factorial because it's a quadratic. Second row of differences, that's why that's a 2. Now, in order to find a, we would divide 4 by 2 factorial, and 2 factorial is just 2, because it's 2 times 1. So 4 divided by 2, of course, would be 2. So the leading coefficient is 2. It goes 2x squared something. So we would say this polynomial is a quadratic function, it's a second degree function, and the leading coefficient is 2. And that's the end of the lesson.